Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos for, on YouTube for you guys to watch here on my channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you would like any additional information or are interested in looking at any of my patterns, please click check on the description below the video and there will be links to my Ravelry pattern store. And if you feel like checking them out, please do. But today I have something that I think is pretty fun. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I have done a couple of what I call book looks, which it's kind of my way of saying a book review, but I'm not really reviewing the book because a review implies like critique like I'm going to say negative things. And if I don't like a book, I'm not going to make a video about it. I, I just don't see any point in that. And I'm not the kind of person that wants to put that kind of negativity out there. So I'm just going to show you guys books that I like. And I've already shown you one of this designer's books. It was everyday lace and I will put a little drop down card thing so if you wanted to watch that video and learn more about this book you can go see it but today we are talking about this one which is called unexpected cables and instead of me just looking through it which is what I've done previously I cooked up a little twist where so what I was thinking was when you're looking through a knitting book, wouldn't it be awesome to have the designer sitting right next to you so that when you saw something and had a question, you could ask them, like, what were you thinking here? Or what if I changed this? So I got on Skype with Heather and we did exactly that. I looked through the book. I talked about the elements that I liked in many of these fabulous, fabulous designs. Let me see if I can do the flip through. Ooh, it's awesome. Look, she even signed it. Ooh, isn't that cool? So that is what's coming up. The video is going to be a little over a half an hour long because it's a great book and there was a lot to talk to Heather about. So I just wanted to give you that heads up that it's longer than normal. I don't think it's excessively long, but I really hope you enjoy this interview. And here we are with Heather Zapetti. Say hi, Heather. Hi, Heather. <laughs> So we're real excited that I, we get to talk to Heather in person about her fabulous book, Unexpected Cables. So first thing I want to know is why Unexpected? Um, so the title Unexpected Cables comes from the whole idea that when I say um, knitted cables, uh, most people think of um, the traditional, uh, like thick, heavy, um, cabled fisherman sweater. I mean, that's kind of like what a lot of knitters think about, or, um, just like that thick, heavy cabled sweater that, you know, your grandma knits for you and that makes you look three times bigger. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not a size six, you don't want to knit because you're going to look like a snowman, you know? Okay. Um, and so I really wanted, um, to kind of turn that on its head and, um, I love knitting cables and I want everyone to love cables as well. And, um, so the idea is to take the idea of cables and make it unexpected and, okay. um, to say, okay, so cables don't have to be that thick, heavy, chunky, you know, um, bulky fabric. They can be, Not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. Right. And <laughs> Actually, I do have a piece that's a bulky fabric um, in there, but um, it's not like an all over mm -hmm. fabric, um, cable fabric. But um, just saying that um, cables can be soft and delicate and put into garments that are flowy and feminine and, um, you know, not what you would traditionally think of when I say knitted cables. And so that's kind of the whole idea. Um, and so the book is um, 
divide it into three sections. Um, refined, which is all about using mostly like twisted stitches, which is like a one or two stitch um, cable. So it's a, a much smaller cabling crossing, which is yeah, going to make mean, it a lot more delicate. So yeah. that's just, you're saying the distinction between, could you elaborate on the distinction between a cable and a twisted stitch? Right. So uh, a twisted stitch, well, a twisted, one twisted stitch, of course, is just knitting a stitch through the back. Through the back. Um, okay. Um, that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like crossing two stitches or maybe crossing one stitch over like two or three other stitches. Um, so in that way, um, we're not taking like two stitches crossing over two stitches or okay. four stitches crossing over, you know, like we're not taking a bunch of stitches crossing over, which is what a traditional cable is. We're just going to take like one crossing over one. And, and, so we, are, and we are talking about crossing as opposed to when you do the knit through the second stitch and then come back and knit through the first stitch. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a real cross. And actually what you're talking about is simply the same thing. You're okay. actually knitting the second stitch first and then knitting the first stitch. So what you're talking about is like a shortcut to do it without using a cable needle. Okay. But you're actually doing the, the cable crossing. Yeah, I noticed that you had in here instructions on working cables without mm -hmm. the cable needle, which is awesome. Um, there are more stitches being involved in this illustration than I normally try to do without a cable needle. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'm brave enough to do it. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, while you're here, you know, and I don't know if this is going to be weird, look through the book and show people. So the first thing in here. Mm -hmm. is a scarf it, yep. it's like a shawly scarf thing so really but it's not again when I think of a cabled scarf I would think of some big heavy thing and right. you like put, Celtic braids you put and a ruffle like on it right <laughs> so that is totally not really soft and feminine mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they're just so these are all little cable crosses mm -hmm. and this is knit side to side yes okay yep. cool with garter garter's always good and then we have this cool sweater vest. Mm -hmm. I think the world kind of needs more sweater vests. I love a sweater vest. I'm on like a crusade to bring back the sweater vest, I know, which sounds but... really silly, but um, I like I run really hot. Like mm -hmm. I would never move down south. I'm sorry. Um, I know, <laughs> but I'm hot all the time. Um, but like if I do get cold, it's usually just like my core. Like I don't want anything mm -hmm. like my arms and things like that, especially because of knitting and things. Um, but um, just like on my core, on my body, keeping that warm is really important. So the sweater vest is awesome. So we need to like hashtag sweater vest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, but I love, it is, again, it's delicate. I like that um, the little holes, mm -hmm. is that just tiny little cables? Or, um, or is there I, actual lace in there? There is tiny bit of lace in that it's one of those um stitches where you're you're pulling the stitch over and then you're knit yarn over knit okay so it's like one of those gathered stitches so there is a little like, bit of a yarn cinched, over there. do they call it cinched stitches? yeah like a cinched, yeah. cinched stitch Ooh, yeah. this is gorgeous next we've got this beautiful hat tam mm -hmm. uh, and again these are well like you said they're just little tiny stitches mm -hmm. so that's just a, a one over one type mm -hmm. cross yep I really like the way you integrated it into the brim. It, mm -hmm. it they just it flows, flows right, right, yeah, right flows out right of ribbing, the ribbing, and it really. Now this, the neckline on this is fantastic. It is just absolutely beautiful. Um, I was looking at this earlier, and I was imagining I would think that this would look gorgeous on like like a spaghetti strap dress. Like mm -hmm. if you wore a spaghetti strap dress under it. Yeah, I actually, that... I like to wear this one like at festivals and stuff. And mm -hmm. I always wear it with like a cami that has like a little bit of lace here. Okay. Instead of a button down collared well, no, plaid shirt. It's, <laughs> it's really interesting to see different ways to wear it. Yeah. And I was thinking about, because I've seen you wear this. And I was <laughs> thinking it would look really elegant like on, on an e on like almost like an evening dress kind mm -hmm. of thing if you did it in a um like a really fancy yarn mm -hmm. like what? with some sparkles or something that yeah would be nice yeah this is in lorna's laces sportmate 
which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And that really breathes real well, real well, right? Yeah, that has that, um, that cooling stuff in mm -hmm. it at last, I guess. And but, it's supposed to But if you did it with something that was like, um, like with some Angora in it, and it would be like fuzzy. Mm -hmm. But how, well, you know, and me saying that, what kind of effect would that kind of fuzziness have on your cables? Um, they would just get kind of lost a little bit. So, so you still get the texture. Idea. Um, not necessarily. You'd still see them, mm -hmm. but they'd get kind of mm, muted. Do you know see. what I mean? And this is why we're talking to the designer. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, I think that'd be a great idea. And then you're like, uh, or we could not do that. It depends on how much Angora you'd have. Yes. You know, you wouldn't want to do it in like 100% or anything like that. Um, obviously, you it would just be like a fuzzball. Um, Let's stick with the sparkle then. <laughs> I love that the book shows you this picture of how the neckline attaches. That is a really good detail, I think. Yeah, I think um, Interweave and F&W are really good at the photos. They show you all the little details about the garments. Yes. Um, if there's a specific part of the pattern, they show you, you mm -hmm. know, the ribbing, the the way that the sleeve attaches, the way that the collar is, both the underside and the forward side and things like that. Mm -hmm. Very pretty <laughs> socks. I really, the um, the cuff on this mm -hmm. is really beautiful. I'm trying to see with the tiny little. The scallops. Yes, it's yeah. gorgeous. And all these little, this is beautiful sock. And this is a top-down sock, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, and she is a giant, by the way. I have to say, just before, you know, just for the record, those are knee socks. Oh, so, oh, let me pull it back. <laughs> so what she's saying is that the model has very long legs. <laughs> like, I can put those on and they're knee socks. I wear knee socks all the time. <laughs> well, you're not the world's tallest person. <laughs> Right, but I wear normal person knee socks all yes. the time. I'm like a knee sock connoisseur. <laughs> Sweet. So this is a gorgeous mm -hmm. pullover. Let me see if I can show everybody. And when I first looked at this, I thought she had on a shirt under it. But that's the an integrated collar, right? This yeah, I actually a get a collar. lot of people who ask me if that's a shirt or if that's knitted. And yeah. it's actually knitted on. That's well, actually part of it. That's yeah. what I looked at because I was like, why would they put a knitted shirt under there? Because that would be confusing. <laughs> but no, it's attached. Yeah. I think it's a, that's a really sweet detail. Yeah, just a little Peter Pan collar on there. Which is really sweet. But if someone was like really adamantly opposed to Peter Pan co uh, collars, could they like pick it up and put a different kind of neckline on it? Absolutely, yeah. Just like so, some ribbing or something? Yeah, so you, you're you just picking up the stitches. So if you wanted just a regular rib or you just want a rolled neckline or whatever, you know, have at it. You're picking up stitches and so you could do whatever kind of collar you wanted. That's good to know. Yep. It is lovely. We have some mitts, always good. Now those go up to her elbow. Are these like knee socks for your arms? Yes, <laughs> although they're very adaptable. So if you don't want them to be that long, you can absolutely make them shorter um, or you can make them even longer. And have That's them what I was wondering about this. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to make this longer, it would be mm -hmm. super easy to make it longer, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically just two rectangles that are seamed together. It's really cool. I want to show really the back easy. of it. So there's the back. Mm -hmm. So it's got a deep. And if you wanted to like flip it around and wear it real, um, mm -hmm real deep in the front can't or is it well well yeah it's really adaptive. It is about the same however you seam it i mean you can choose to seam it up higher so you mm -hmm. don't have as deep a neckline or you could seam the front you know up higher and the back or the back up higher and the front leave it lower that way you mm -hmm. can flip it around different ways um so it's up to you you could even add a button if you wanted oh fun so if you wanted to have like buttons up the front and is have it the okay back if I, would it be okay if i show the schematic i don't want to Absolutely, sport. yeah. See, mm -hmm. so this is what we're talking about. It's just big rectangles mm -hmm. that you then seam together. That is super smart and sneaky <laughs> because you know I'm a lazy knitter. <laughs> Did we go into a different section? Yeah, so you're into the lace section now. I yeah. was like, ah, I totally missed this. <laughs> yeah, see, look there. 
we went into the lace section. I was like, this is getting really lacy. Yeah. <laughs> what was that yarn? That was really nice. Manos del Uruguay Serena. Mm -hmm. That's got some alpaca in it. I love yep. alpaca. So that's one of my favorite yarns, like it's ever. Fabulous. Okay, see, yeah, this is why this is why I stopped and I'm like, did we go in a different section? Look mm -hmm. how beautiful that is. I mean, it's hard to believe that this, you know, is so lacy and it has cables at the same time. So it's really unexpected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is just work side to side? Um, from one edge to the other, yep. Mm -hmm. Just straight on. Straight on. Now this one. Mm -hmm. This is bottom up? Yep. Look, yeah, that's probably want, my favorite one. Just so is, I want people to see the detail. I'll probably take a picture of this and see if I can overlay it. Um, the It's just gorgeous. And the other thing I really love about this piece is, really, how can a raglan be that beautiful? I just <laughs> don't understand. I mean, the way it comes all the way up and then just merges directly into the... I, I just love that. Because raglans can sometimes look... Um, really sporty mm -hmm. and this is so elegant I, I really and what is the hem treatment going on here uh it's a turned hem okay makes it look very clean right and the linen yarn that's used in that the linen blend really helps with that so it gives it a nice crisp turn which okay. is just perfect for that kind of hem that, uh classic elite mm -hmm. so that's a it's, a so, it's called soft linen. Yeah, yeah, 35 wool, 35 linen, 30 alpaca. Alpaca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's good. Very nice. This, the color in this thing is a phenomenal. Mm -hmm. See if everyone, can you see it? That is gorgeous. Yeah, and that's a really great project, like a quick gift kind of project. It's a worsted weight cow, and it goes really fast. I want to see what it's beautiful. Cast on 8 billion stitches, right? <laughs> For the cow? Yeah. Oh, it's not that bad. No, it's worth it's to not wait, that so bad. it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Now, this is so much fun. Um, you had, did you have a similar shape in your lace book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, circle? I love you... the circle vest shape. The circle vest? Yeah. I, I, kind of, I, I remember uh, fawning a bit over the circle <laughs> vest in the lace one. I want people to see that. How fabulous that is. I was reading the construction on this, trying to figure it out. <laughs> and so it's, you work the center out mm -hmm. and then it's knitted on like you're knitting on an edge and on a shawl, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. That confused me for a moment. <laughs> I was like, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but it made total sense. So just reading it. And again, schematics. Mm -hmm. Schematics are awesome, but that is so cool. And it's amazing because this should be a really heavy cable, but the really big lace that you put in there mm -hmm. lightens it up. Like really. really opens it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're in a new section. I'm actually getting it this time. <laughs> this one's called abstract. Can you explain yeah. what you mean by abstract? So abstract is the fun section. So this is where I really went kind of crazy and, and really had fun with cables and just said, okay, so what can I do to make um, cables and also just like the whole garment just unexpected? So what can I do to like really just liven it up and have fun with my design self, you know, and just make unexpected everything? <laughs> um, and so... Um, you know, turning turning the whole Unexpected design on its end. socks. Yep. So for these socks, like the gusset is not where it should be. It's like on the side and top of the foot. And that is actually what is turning the stitch. Like that's what's turning the stitch around the foot. Oh, whoa. Yeah. So is that what you're talking about right there? Yeah. So th that's the gusset on the side on the top. And then there's no, and then the heel flap kind of goes up the side, but there's not like your traditional like gusset on each side. It's That's crazy. Really, <laughs> not that. And I so know the gusset about increases socks. <laughs> turning that. Yeah. See, this is why I asked Heather to explain because I would have completely missed that because I haven't figured out socks yet. This so everything looks in this like... section has like an interesting construction mm -hmm. or an interesting detail that really makes it the garment itself unexpected, as well as the, um, the cable as well. Yeah. This thing looks super easy to knit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I was looking so, through it and I'm like, whoa, 
that would be pretty fast. Yep. So that's the only thing in there that's like a bulky weight. Uh -huh. And it's, it's really simple because it's just basically like two T-shaped pieces that are uh -huh. put together. And it's knit side to side. T-shape. Mm-hmm. And actually, I liked this, the, the making a closed cable. I thought that was really an interesting, and it's not something you see all the time, mm -hmm. which makes it dead end. And then we have a hat, another hat. Mm -hmm. And that one looks awesome and fuzzy. I like that you just did the one cable because I think more cables would have been a bit too much. Mm -hmm. It looks cool from the top. Just showing everybody. Let's get through here. This it's very one. asymmetrical. Yeah. Hey, speaking of asymmetrical, mm -hmm. looky there. That one is like, like completely asymmetrical. It's kind of a sweater, vesty cardigan thing. Mm -hmm. And the neckline on that is what's super special. So, and the cable is only in the neck, right? Right. And then, so it goes around the neck and then it turns into ribbing, which turns into like this. This big fanned out. thin that, part. That. <laughs> the fin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it drapes beautifully. And is this all in one piece or is it pieced? Um, it's pieced like the collar is sewn on. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is Ba Shasta. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And this, this the cover, the cover one. Can you explain what you were thinking? So this is basically a scarf that has sleeves. It's really cool. Okay. So you can wear it just as a scarf if you want. Okay. So like you can wrap it around and just leave the ends hanging and it's a scarf. Okay. Or, you know, you can put your arms in it and then <laughs> you also have like arm warmers <laughs> at the Keep same time. super warm. <laughs> yeah. It's a really cool idea. So that's the whole idea. And then it turns into kind of like a shrug. Um, and so you can adapt this if you want. If you like hate the idea of wrapping it around your neck at the same time, you can just take out that extra length and just make it a shrug oh, if you okay. want. Oh, just like, like on your arms. Right. So you can just do that if you want. Or if you just love the idea of having a scarf, you know, you can just do the scarf part and not do the in the round to make the sleeves. Um, so it's really adaptable for really you know, whatever cool you piece. want. <laughs> it is a really cool piece. And then... I have to say, this is, I can't believe you left it to last. This is my favorite piece. Well, that's why we left it for last. Because I, it's like the... I adore this piece so <laughs> mm -hmm. much. Um, the asymmetry of it, the way the cable changes, it's not, it's not like just the same thing repeated over and over again. And my, this is going to sound, my absolute favorite thing is that it comes around just a tiny bit on the back. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just... It's just, I love the balance and the negative space and the, the stockinette and the reverse stockinette. It's just awesome. So how did you think up this craziness? So I really just wanted something that like came from the shoulder and like, like, like a starburst. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the kind of idea of it. And it just kind of grew from there. But then, so the whole idea of this was like, well, how do I get people to knit this? Um, Cause I wanted this traditional shape, right? So first my brain goes to doing it in pieces because it's traditional shape. Um, but because it kind of flows into other sides, you can't really do that. Um, Cause obviously in pieces, you're gonna have pieces of cable going everywhere. So actually the whole piece is completely seamless. It is so if amazing. you're gonna do it, it's, it's kind of a fun piece to do because it's really, um, it looks really traditionally um, because the whole shaping is looks traditional, but mm -hmm. it's a completely weird construction because it actually starts like in the center back and it goes like up over the shoulders and then down the front and then it connects again under the arms. You would never ever <laughs> think that. It, it, you're right. right. And it, it just goes looks, down. Like, looks like a regular sweater. Right. And then you pick up the sleeves and work them top down. It's... And then you, you know, you do the collar and stuff. But yeah, it's completely seamless. And that was like, the only way I could get my brain to say, how can I make this transition and flow so that that cable is wrapped around, can wrap around to the back. And, and that's my favorite detail. So it was work all the math because, and I want to just really quickly show someone. So there are charts. Yes. Lots of charts. <laughs> there are lots of charts. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for walking us through this book. Um, it's really cool to hear 
like what's going on. And before we signed off, I wanted to ask you what new and exciting things you might be working on right now. Um, thanks. So um, I'm working on a new collection uh, using gradient yarns. So They're super <laughs> hot right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've been hot for a while. And so I've been like accumulating all these different yarns because I go to like Maryland and I go to um, Rhinebeck and I just can't resist like, yeah. you know, yeah. all Secret the pretty designers have stashes too. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and I just, you know, you just can't resist because they're so beautiful. And so I have all these beautiful like gradient sets and <sighs> just all these gradient yarns. And I'm like, oh, I need to do something with these. So I decided I'm just going to do this um, six piece uh, design collection with them. And so I started and I have three pieces out now and then uh, three more to come out and I'm trying to get them all done this summer. Um, I did a quick poll and people didn't want all shawls. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing um, like three shawls and three other accessories. Okay. Um, so I have three out now. So the first one um, was Murex, which was this purple stole. That is gorgeous and that was awesome this was um this was a new to me um yarn i got picked up at my local yarn store from fiber story and oh. this was a gradient set and then one of their solids as well and i just okay. fell in love with it it was gorgeous well i love me some purple so yeah it was ugh. it was hard to pick one of them because they had they also had a green it was like foresty Ooh. greens to brown and just like really oh just really beautiful colors. It was really hard to pick one, but I went with the purples. The moral of that story is go to your local yarn store, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I have in the back, you can see I have um, uh, the hat. Um... Did you forget what you named your hat? <laughs> <laughs> I will look it up and I'll make it pop up at the bottom of the screen. There's the hat. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> and the shawl. <laughs> Or pea mint. <laughs> Excellent. So um, it's the. Did you say that it's aqua aquarelle, right? Red. And that means that's a that's a watercolor color technique. It's actually it means watercolor in French. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that's um. I just picked that as a name. I've been doing a lot of watercolor lately, and so like the gradients really reminded me of like watercolor and painting yeah. and stuff like that. So how like one color just flows into the next, and so. so by my count, you've already done two shawls. So mm -hmm. there's one more shawl coming. Yep. And you have have you figured out what the ex other accessories are going to be? Yeah. So the next one, it's kind of like a cheat because it's not a shawl, but it's like um, this is the next one I'm working on, and it's a cowl. And so, so it's kind of shawly, but not really. Can you hold it up a little higher? So this is what I'm. Ooh. It's all bunched up now. You kind of see. You get a little preview. What's the next color? Jellies. And then it goes into like a white and then Ooh. into a sand color. Oh, so this my. is like very beach like. That's going to be gorgeous. Color. So it's like ocean and then beach. And, and then what's that um, yarn? this is um, Knit Circus. Oh, cool. Yarns. Pixie Dust, I think is what it's called. And it has, I don't know if you can see, it has like sparkles in it. It's so hard. <laughs> Look at me. People yeah. are like, you're not looking at it. I'm looking at my screen. It's so hard to catch sparkles. But yes, I can yeah. see it. Um, so that's really fun. And then, um, the next ones I have, I have some, um, Madeline Tosh, um, unicorn tails. Oh, those are awesome. So I have a bunch of those that I'm going to do probably fingerless mitts. Okay. Um, so everyone's getting like a preview of the next things in my thing. <laughs> um, and then, um, uh, for the like grand finale thing, I'm going to do like this giant shawl with two gradient sets from the fiber seed. Oh my goodness. So I am I found those at TNA. I didn't even know they did gradient sets. I love, love, love them. Mm -hmm. And I love the people Anyone at the fiber seed. Anyone who's watching my channel and has seen any of my videos knows <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge fiber seed fan too. So yeah. I can't and so wait when I to see that did one. Gradient sets, I was like, oh, I was so excited. So I have this great plan for a, a big shawl with that. So that'll be like the final and grandest, you know, shawl in the collection so i'm excited that's but, exciting. thank you so much for sharing the sneak peeks yes, thank you hearing, you Happy. heard it here first i'm very excited yep. <laughs> and thank you so much for chatting with me if you want to say goodbye to everybody yep, bye thanks for having me <laughs> okay thank you so much for watching this book look at unexpected cables i hope you enjoyed talking to heather as much as i did 
If you like this format and would like to see more videos like this, please click the like button and slash or comment in the comments below. If there's a book or someone you'd like me to try to talk to, that'd be fabulous. I'm always on the lookout for new and exciting books. Also, if you have any questions for Heather or anything that you'd like to know about the patterns in the book that I didn't hit on, ask in the comments and I will see if I can get that information from Heather. If you would like to be notified whenever I make an, and upload a new video to YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.